Lance Rice was born in Salem, Oregon on October 19, 1966, but moved to McMinnville with his family as a young boy. Early on, he displayed a seemingly natural ability to perform well in every sport he tried, especially standing out in Little League as well as American Legion Baseball, which he competed in every summer. Entering his first year at MHS as a sophomore in the fall of 1981, Lance made the varsity football team but saw the majority of his playing time on the junior varsity squad. He was a starting quarterback and led the Bears to a 500 season while winning the team's most valuable player award in the process. In the winter, Rice decided to try a sport new to him, wrestling. Even though the sport did not come as naturally for him and he struggled early, Lance fought through the adversity to make the varsity team and helped them win four out of their six meets. Individually, he competed well in the district tournament and won the team's most improved wrestler award. Lance saw plenty of playing time on the varsity baseball team that spring as the team's backup catcher and switch hitter. His ability to hit equally well with either hand made him one of the Grizzlies' best hitters. We played uh, wiffle ball in between these two buildings, and on one side was a chain link fence, and on the other side was the side of the building, and behind it was, um, I think it was an electrical panel box. Anyways, we made a, a strike zone out of tape on the thing, and we modified our wiffle ball so we could, you know, get a little bit of zip on it. Uh, the only problem with the game is, <clears throat> as you're batting, you were too close to the chain link fence, so you couldn't take a full swing right-handed. So uh, Lance decided that he could take a full swing left-handed, so he just jumped in there, and all of a sudden he was batting left-handed. I'd never seen him bat left-handed before, and I don't think he ever had before, but he just started doing it. And it only took him, I don't know, maybe five, ten minutes, and he's making solid contact, and I was giving him the best I had. It was quite impressive, him being able to just bat left-handed all of a sudden. Rice helped the team to a 15-win and 10-loss season, which was good for a second-place league finish. They missed qualifying for the state tournament by losing the final game of the season in the 10th inning to league champion Tiger. As a junior, Lance earned the position of starting quarterback on the varsity football team and led them to a six-win and three-loss season, which was good for a second-place finish in the league standings. The Bears missed the state playoffs by only one game, as Rice was honored with an all-league first-team selection to end a strong season. Lance continued to work hard on becoming a better wrestler that winter, as he helped the team achieve a 14-9 overall record. He took second place at the district tournament in the 148-pound weight class before advancing to the quarterfinals in the state tournament, only losing in a tight match to the eventual state champion. Rice took over the position of starting catcher that baseball season and helped the team to one of their best records in school history. The Bears won 24 out of the 29 games that season on their way to a league championship. In the state playoffs, they defeated the previous two state champions in West Lynn and Madison, but came up two runs short against McNary in the semifinal round game. Lance led the team in batting percentage with a 398 average and earned all-league first team and all-state honorable mention selections. Due to his great play that season, Lance was beginning to receive national recruitment to play Division I college baseball and was even offered a scholarship to Oregon State University. Lanny was a great leader uh, in the huddle. He would always be talking, just not just the, the plays, but hey, we need to you know shore up this side over here on the line, or hey, if we get one more block, or, hey, Freddie, why don't you, you know, go out instead of an in, come back. You know, it depends on the defense. He would be reading defenses really well and adjust in the huddle uh, on the fly with us. He could throw the ball a mile, and uh, he could do anything. Uh, whatever you want him to do, he would do. And I'll tell you what, he was a great leader in, uh, in baseball, too. He, every day he came and he focused on a part of his game and got better. Uh, in fact, it was great leadership. Leadership by, by uh, you know, he modeled it. Uh, you know, got us to raise our level of play, and and I think uh, that really affected our team. I think he's one of those guys that can just, um, you know, give him a tennis racket and he'll beat you. You know, give him a golf club and he'll find a way to beat you. Now a senior and one of the school's most versatile athletes, Rice led the football team through a tough injury plague season to a four and five record losing two games by only three total points. Lance won the team's MVP award while once again being selected on the All-League's first team. However, the story of the season was the entire football team taking part in the filming of Quarterback Princess. The team held full contact scrimmages late into the night for weeks while several of the players, including Lance, made the final cut of the movie and VHS cover art. Rice ended an all-star football career after participating in this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. As a team captain and senior leader of the wrestling team, Lance helped the coaching staff run the practices as he looked to have his best season yet. 
Even though the team struggled that year, Lance Shine as a 168-pound all-league wrestler won the team's most inspirational award and the district championship. He ended an excellent wrestling career as Mac High's top placer in the state tournament. Hopes of returning to the state playoffs were high going into Lance's senior baseball season, as the team raced out to a 20-win, 6-loss, and 1-tie record. They captured their second straight league championship while being ranked as high as second in state for the majority of the season, which is a top ranking in school history. The Bears again advanced to the semifinals in the state playoffs before losing by only two runs to the eventual state champion Medford team. Lance repeated as one of the team's top hitters, batting 414, while being selected onto the all-league first team and all-state third team. Lance was a, a very, very good catcher who threw extremely well. As a, high, as a high school coach, very seldom do you have catchers who people just walk in watch about five pitches say whoa boy that guy can really play. Defensively Lance was probably the best catcher in Oregon uh, our senior year. He was pushing it our junior year. Uh, defensively he was absolutely, teams would change their running game because he was behind the plate. Uh, coupled with, we had some pretty decent pitchers but uh, landing behind the plate they didn't run too well. He had very good skills, quick feet, quick hands, threw really well and really understood the game. In addition, he was a very good hitter and, quite honestly, was a very good pitcher, too, when, when that situation arose. I think Lance's, probably his best asset was he was a fearsome competitor who always believed that he could get the job done, uh, had good success against good players, and the better the competition was, it seemed as though the better Lance played. I think of all the kids that I've coached in 30 years in baseball, he had the quickest release as a catcher uh, of anybody. Uh, and we've had a, a fair amount of good catchers. Uh, quick hands, quick feet, quick release, uh, and a quick bat. And on top of that, he ended up being just a you know a wonderful, great kid, I mean, to work with. They would get a pretty good jump, but his footwork and arm speed got it over to second base pretty quick, and not a whole lot of guys stole on Lanny. If a guy got on base, first base, whatever, by whatever means, and he tried to steal, we got a good chance of, of getting him out. He, he, he was that good. He called a great game, very good defensive end, as I said before, uh, was a quick feet and, and, a, and a quick arm. And uh, uh, at that position uh, was the best uh, that I've coached in my, in my 30 years uh, at, at the high school level in, in Midville High School. So it was an honor and a pleasure to, to, to coach him. And, and just a great guy all the way around. Just a very, very, very nice guy. After graduating from MHS and leading his American Legion baseball team in hitting that summer with a 490 percentage, Lance Rice accepted a full athletic scholarship to play baseball for Oregon State University while studying business. During his freshman season in 1985, Lance saw partial playing time as a backup catcher and designated hitter while getting on base 15 times in 20 games. He had only one error and 100 chances as catcher. Rice worked hard on growing his skills in multiple areas with head coach Jack Riley and his staff, filling in at pitcher and in the outfield in practices. This is when Lance perfected his ability to switch hit, which improved his prospects for the future in the eyes of the coaches. The Beavers won 34 and lost 17 that season, while on their way to a Northern Division Tournament Championship and making an appearance in the NCAA Regional Tournament. Lance continued to improve in his sophomore season, appearing in 31 games, more than doubling his attempts as a catcher. He threw out well over half of all opposing players trying to steal a base and ended the season with an outstanding 99.4 fielding percentage, while helping OSU become one of the best defensive teams in the conference. The Beavers achieved a 39-15 overall record and an 18-5 conference record, both of which were amongst the best records in school history, while locking up the Pac-10 Northern Division Championship. They went two up and two down in the NCAA Regional Tournament, with Lance starting at catcher for one of those wins. Rice began to truly come into his own in his junior year by starting 34 of the 46 games and throwing out 59% of the opponent's steals attempts. He only struck out 11 times in 144 at-bats and once hit two home runs, one with each hand to go along with four RBIs in the same game. His extreme versatility became even more evident when he filled in as a relief pitcher for 15 games, tallying up 32 strikeouts and only one loss. Rice propelled the team to a 31-15 and overall record, including a Best of the West Tournament Championship. His great play earned him the honor of being the first catcher in school history to receive OSU's Golden Glove Award with a 98.8 fielding percentage. After a stellar junior year, the eyes of several major league scouts were on Rice as he looked to finish off his collegiate career strong. As the senior leader, Lance started all 49 games at catcher for the Beavers, while leading the team in RBIs, runs, hits, and fielding percentage with 98%. He filled in at pitcher six times, only losing once and striking out 16 batters, and led Oregon State to a 30-19 record, including a third-place finish in the Pac-10 tournament. 
Rice capped off his best season yet by being selected onto the All-Conference First Team, as well as winning the team's MVP award and the Pac-10 Conference Catcher of the Year award. He finished his career with 47 RBIs, which at the time was the sixth most in school history, and Lance is still a part of four OSU team records today. In June of 1988, Lance Rice lived a childhood dream when he was drafted into the major leagues by the Los Angeles Dodgers with a 374th overall pick out of almost 1,500 draftees. He would spend the next five seasons with the organization, developing his skills in the minor leagues while accepting a backup role to all-star big league catcher Mike Piazza. Lance worked hard on his game and patiently waited for his chance to be called up to the majors, while each year he was one of the team's leaders in RBIs and fielding percentage as the first string catcher. In 1993, Rice signed with the Montreal Expos minor league team as a free agent and helped the team to 100 wins out of 140 games and a league championship. Two years later, Lance signed with the Detroit Tigers minor league team, but was thinking about trying his luck with coaching. The following season, he signed with the minor league club for the Baltimore Orioles as a player coach. In 1996, at the age of 30, Lance Rice decided to retire from the sport of baseball, a sport in which he won at every level. From Little League to the minor leagues, Lance Rice only had one losing season in his entire career. He now lives in Virginia with his wife and two kids while being in the business of corporate real estate and startup companies. He stays close to athletics by competing in statewide golf tournaments and coaching youth sports. And I would tell you, with, with my experiences as, as you know, hand, having different catchers handle uh, me as a pitcher, uh, he was as good as it got. Did he possess necessarily every attribute that you know someone might want to see at the major level, major league level? I, you know, I don't know, but um, I know some people who have gone to the big leagues. They can't catch. I mean, you know. It, you know, that used to always be the litmus test or the, the comparability of, okay, how does that compare to what I had as a catcher in college? Not close. Yeah, you know, it's like looking at Mike Piazza. I mean, you know, Mike Piazza, you know, didn't start out as a catcher and kind of came in and that kind of interrupted Lance's direct path to the major leagues. And, and you know, obviously Mike Piazza had a great career of, of swing in the bat, but he, he was never a good catcher. Um, and you, you sometimes wonder, you know, whether or not that guy that came up and, you know, hit with a little bit more power, but maybe didn't handle the pitchers quite, a well, quite as well as he could, or maybe didn't, you know, have as high as a throw up percent. You know, which one of those ultimately have a bigger impact on the game? And I, I would tell you that having a catcher that can handle your pitching staff and being able to limit other teams' ability to do things against you on the base paths is much greater uh, than someone's ability to hit a few home runs. Um, so that, unfortunately, I don't get to make that decision. Had Lance been in the right place at the right time with the right person that gave him a break, he could have had a 10-year career in the major leagues. There were many, many players who played 10 years in the major leagues that weren't as good as Lance Rice was. Uh, he happened to be with the Dodgers. They were winning World Series at that time, and they had Mike Sosha catching. But I've had guys in their organization tell me that there was no question that if they'd had Lance catching, they would have had the same type of success that they had without him.